I suggest to my students all the time to open your heart to the responsibility now that our art is just as producing just as sophisticated results as anything else is, any other medical modality. You know, come on in, whatever your problem is, anxiety, depression, blood disorders, skin disorders, bone disorders, postural, you know, malalignments, everything else. Come on in, get on the futon, and we'll see what we can do. Today, we are talking to Mukti, otherwise known as Michael Buck. He is the founder of the Vedic Conservatory, and we also have his senior teacher, Serafima. And Mukti has taught well over 25,000 students over a long and distinguished career. And we get into the history of Thai massage, the inspiration behind his practice, the essence and the quality of what makes this such an incredible healing modality, and just share some amazing stories about what Thai massage is all about and why it is such a loving, wonderful practice. And that and so much more is coming right up. Well, hey, Mukti. Thank you so much for coming on today and talking and sharing some wisdom about Thai massage and about you. So how about we start just by getting to know you a little bit. Can you tell us a bit about your background? All right. I um, was raised in England. Mm -hmm. I was raised in New Jersey in England. My mother's British, so I was uh, shifted back and forth with my family quite a bit. And um, then... Um, yeah, you know, lived on the Jersey Shore for a while. Okay. Uh, right next door to Asbury Park, Springsteen Land. And um, then I moved here to Florida, Delray Beach, about eight, 17 years ago. And uh, right now, I've handed out over 25,000 initiating certificates in 14 countries. And uh, it's on a roll, Shia. It feels like it's on a roll right now. And, and um, I'm kind of happy. Though a bit tired, <laughs> no, <laughs> my schedule is a bit unrelenting. Um, usually, doing about uh, the team and myself, we're doing about probably 60, 70, uh, offering 60 or 70 courses every year. That's amazing. Yeah, and I right now I've authored, um, you know, about uh, seven different manuals. Uh, and basically seven sequences, sort of like uh, martial arts. Uh, you come and you study a, a sequence or a, a kata. Uh, like, yeah. So yeah, everything's fine. Everything feels good. You know, just uh, hopefully I can maintain the physical strength. Otherwise, I'm going down with my boots on next to my men. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's amazing. I mean, congratulations on all that success on, uh, you know, 25,000 students, that's really beautiful, of course. You know, it's such a powerful modality, and to be able to spread it that wide is a, a real honor uh, for a lot of people. Feels good. It feels good. Good. Right. I think what I need to mention also is that I'm not presenting Thai. If I came in front of a class and said, um, I'm exclusively presenting Thai, I wouldn't be being authentic. Because I have, of course, uh, different backgrounds. So I put it under the bigger umbrella. I put it under Vedic. So we call it Vedic Thai massage or Vedic Thai body work. And, uh, but I think that's okay. I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with the fact that Thailand has um, very close uh, parallels with uh, Ayurvedic medicine. Mm -hmm. You know, the Pingamba, the Shoshona, you know, the Ida. The various names are just <laughs> too close to yeah. say that there's a distinction between the two. Well, can, you, can you talk to it a little bit? Like what, what is Vedic Thai massage and how is it different from, I don't know, what you think is more of a standard Thai massage that you might find somewhere else? Well, that question certainly comes up a lot for sure. Everybody wants to know the precision and the, uh, the distinctions and whether I have an accurate answer to that or not. Um, essentially, I'd like to say that when you go to Thailand, um, the first thing you see is that it's a residual, I call it residual Vedic culture. In other words, the king and queen, or now just the queen, have Ram in their title. Mm -hmm. uh, 
11 cities where I take my students to is a, a town called Ayudhya. It's, it's in ruins, of course. And Ayudhya is, of course, from Mayan also. And so, yeah, the teachers there and the, you know, the, the, the uh, researchers, they agree that there's a very tight alignment. What is the difference between the two? Um, I'm use, uh, primarily I'm using a lot of Vedic terminologies, uh, more so than Thai. I just, maybe I was lazy. I just didn't feel like memorizing. I had memorized, you know, 100 verses from Bhagavad Gita and, and so many uh, Vedic um, interpretations. I, I didn't want to, um, I just wasn't feeling that comfortable. You know, when you study a culture, you usually, you better just prepare to dedicate a number of years to whether it's Aztec or whatever it might be. It's going to be a number of years. So I just wanted to go to what I thought was maybe the source of so many. And um, how did I determine that uh, Vedic is a source of Thai? Um, I was using the formula of tracing back languages. And there's a book, I'm uh, forgetting the authors right now, um, I, Ayurvedic uh, acupuncture. So there's two big cultures there. And um, in the beginning of the book, uh, there is some knowledge stating that even acupuncture uh, came from the Ayurvedic culture in 100 BC. So I was feeling good about that too. Mm -hmm. um, so the, what you're seeing with the Vedic tie is, it's a composite, of course, of, of my backgrounds, Shiatsu and Anma and Swedish. And, and of course, everybody personalizes their own style. Um, and Thai. Right. And, um, so I, I inform my students right away when we, go, when we go to Thailand that what you're going to be learning is pretty fundamental. It's not going to be as exotic um, as, even though Thailand is very exotic, uh, of what I'm presenting. Because of my background in physical yoga and martial arts also, I'm able to, you know, pretty much understand the body's limitations and things. So honestly, you know, what I've created here is, um, I really can't say where it came from. I think it's a composite of so many interactions and uh, I'm proud of it. It seems to be making lots of, it's, there seems to be that healing mystery behind it for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but to trace it back, um, there's going to be a segment of space and time there where it's going to be a composite in there for sure. Right. Uh, but my lineage it will honor, of course, Jivaka Kumara and, you know, Lord Buddha. Our lineage goes back, as you see, in, in many times on, on my classes, there'll be some uh, tapestries on the wall. One will be Tara, or maybe Sushanisha Vijaya Dhani, which is one of the five Tibetan healing goddesses. Um, and it will also be Dhanvantari. And Dhanvantari is the medical incarnation, recognized as the medical incarnation of Vishnu in Hinduism. So, um, kind of exciting to let the, <laughs> let the class know that your lineage now includes uh, Tara and that, that, why do I say that? Because I'm sure that Buddha, Gautama Buddha and Jivaka were aware of the, the more distant, more uh, traditional uh, healing lineages. Mm -hmm. and so, same, same thing with Chanaka. Chanaka, I believe, had to have known about Tari, and he certainly knew about Tara and things. So, whether it's a uh, you know improvised, <laughs> shall we say or not, right. you know, it's about it. this is the lineage. And the students are happy. You know, I mean, they're, my prayers go to them and Tara. My prayers go to Tara. I believe that's where the magic of uh, the healing is coming from. And um, but I'm certainly not one of those practitioners who is claiming to create something new. Mm -hmm. We have enough. We have enough of those circulating in our marketplace. And I just feel like eventually they just find themselves on the ocean of modalities and realizing that there's nothing really new. Let's better we turn back to traditional than we go with uh, something created. Like so. um, <clears throat> what you're, what I'm under, what I'm hearing is um, that you you know, through your, your Hare Krishna background and, and Shiatsu and Swedish and Anma and Thai massage background, essentially, it's like you've 
you have your teachers that you learn from like Anthony James and you have your own almost, I mean, maybe like prayer to be a healer, to receive um, these, you know, healing, transmission. right. Transmission. Healing transmission. Mm -hmm. And you've also studied, you know, it sounds like you're a scholar as well. And you've studied the history of Thai massage you've, and Ayurveda and kind of tracing it all back to its roots in India and basically to being present to receive how you want to teach that. And, and like you said, you're not recreating something new, but you're really dialing into that, that rich tapestry of healing that goes back thousands of years. Is that? Yeah. It's a, it's a combination of some new material, but also, you know, for example, the lines that are presented in Thai, you know, they're just really landmarks because, or, or contours, because of Thailand's medical history being quite disturbed by invading other armies. So, um, pretty common knowledge. Um, and even five element theory, for example, Chinese, um, there's only one reference point on the bottom of the foot. Uh, you know this, it's gushing spring, kidney number one. Uh, you and I, if we needed to, you know, reference a claim or something, we would need to uh, have other identifying points on the bottom of the foot. Um, and there are lots of them, there are reflex zones. So I see, or at least maybe it's my determination that it's good that we go with um, zone therapy more these days. The body divided up into five zones and um, because, you know, even in Ch traditional Chinese medicine, there are parts of the body which the meridians are not covering. They might be covering them when they radiate, and they might be covering them when we identify them on the other koshas, anamikosha, venamikosha, excuse me, anamikosha, chronomikosha, venamikosha, venamikosha, and then the myakosha. Because, uh, yeah, they radiate. Let's say the stomach meridian, for example, it's not just functioning on a fit on the on a mycosia, it's also functioning on a pronomycosia and the other koshas. So koshas, just to clarify, means you know, sheaths, meaning different layers of energy. Radiating sheaths of energy, envelopes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um Paramahansa Yogananda in his book, Autobiography of a Yogi, determines that the pranamayakosha is actually more complex than the physical body. So, uh, so what was our question again? Um, well, you were, you were just kind of, you were talking about how uh, not all the points, like even in Meridian, you know, like the body's not fully mapped out uh, through those Meridians that they're, they're just, you know, basically a map. And then, you know, you were kind of bringing it all together about where your inspiration kind of comes from. Yeah. How can there not be, the new uh, ingredients, the new formulas added to the traditional uh, because, for example, again, bottom of the feet or different places on the body where there, it is not identified in traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, um, and so lines, uh, Thai body work, I, I just wasn't happy with it. So nice identification. Uh, those lines change when you rotate the, with the leg or the arm. So that became a little bit confusing for students, for myself. So we follow contours and we're working with a lot these days, marmas, uh, you know, radiating steers, chakras are radiating wheels, and uh, of course, made up of the same bio, bio energy, mm -hmm. and uh, that bio energy being described in Thai as the wind, and wind can also be interpreted as spirit, and I prefer to interpret it as consciousness. So, um, you know, when we release a marma or we clear it, we access it or stimulate it, uh, what the energy that's being released or radiated can be uh, considered to be consciousness also. Mm. So what you mean to say is <clears throat> your approach is to take very much a, like a, an energetic understanding of the body and, and help people, you know, first identify send lines and energy lines and marma points or pressure points and get a real good sense of what you feel is the person's prana and a person's energy to 
release consciousness and to help, you know, expand healing through, you know, almost like more consciousness, more presence, more. Yeah. More liberated consciousness. Yeah. Okay. Once liberated consciousness radiates freely, then there's a sense of going home. And then that very familiar emotional release we see in class a lot with the tears come on and things like that, you know. Did you want to add anything? Oh, no. Are you sure? Yeah. Kind of you. <laughs> Come on. I'm sure Shadow will appreciate you. Hi. Hi, Seraphima. <laughs> Hi, come on. Well, Seraphima owns a, a, a Wushu uh, school in R Moscow uh, for children and also for adults. And it's, I guess it's a martial arts style. It's Kung Fu style. Kung Fu. But anyway, okay. I came to the classroom because of that too, I think so. <laughs> because, yeah. If we will touch a martial arts world, we can see that we have lots of injuries up to the uh, classes. So it's a really nice way to help them too, was just bring this art to the martial arts world. Mm. That's not the point. The point is that the Vedic, ta uh, Vedic uh, body work, Vedic Thai yoga body work is really, um, I don't know, something an incredible that you can suggest to your clients if you are a yoga uh, instructor you can um, you can suggest do some private session with the people um, who are coming as a client if you're a psychologist it's really nice because it's a it's a world of touch and it's really true touch of of sincere and with your deep consciousness it's, all of that. I'm so sorry. I'm from Russia. <laughs> Sometimes I have lots of mistakes. Um, I mean, Michael and or Mukti and and Serafina, do you want to add anything else about that? About really, you know, what you think? What is the essence of Thai massage? Who benefits from it? You know, what you've seen in training twenty five thousand or more students. I mean, well, thank you for the question, Shai. Um, like Serafina mentioned, we're just excited to to be able to offer this to all professions. In other words, mm -hmm. if it's, you know, the, the, the prof medical professions that are representing the uh, cerebral aspects of our life, the psychologists and psychiatrists and things, we're very excited to, to know that we can ask them, invite them into the course. And also all the somatic therapists, the people working primarily with the, with the body, you know, the trainers and the dancers and the martial artists and the massage therapists and all that. So, how do we feel confident about that? Because through experience, we see that um, some of our clients are medical professionals, you know, in our private work, and um, and they're giving a thumbs up to this. And you know, we like to describe it in classes that there was a medical hierarchy at one time, like a totem pole, and at the top of the totem pole was, of course, the uh, gods and goddesses of medicine, you know, the neurologists and cardiologists, psychiatrists, surgeons. And, um, and at the bottom of the totem pole was, of course, more of the folk healers, you know, the aromatherapists, numerologists, uh, Vastu, Feng Shui, all of that. And about what we see today is that, this, that the, the totem pole is now lying on its side. Mm. And we can see that um, how did it get there, uh, how did it go from vertical to horizontal, is that these so-called gods and goddesses of medicine uh, they actually went to see an astrologer. They went to see a numerologist. They went to see a, a aromatherapist or a, a, gemologist, a gemologist. And then, of course, realizing, oh, my goodness, you know, this is just as potent a medicine as anything else is, really. As a matter of fact, mainstream medicine happens to seem to be in a lot of trouble today, uh, as is the, the psychiatric world, uh, having, you know, freely distributed their drugs to such an extent that uh, they've created more problems than not. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for example, uh, somebody I know had prostate surgery in London um, and they left a medical instrument inside of his rectum afterwards. And, you know, iotrogenic, the category called iotrogenic, where, you know, just from you or I going to visit somebody in the hospital, there's a very good chance of us uh, picking up a bacteria or picking up a, a virus or some other problem. So I suggest to my students all the time 
to open your heart to the responsibility now that our art is just as is producing just as sophisticated results as anything else is, any other medical modality. And so that's a it's a significant way of beginning a class. I have to suggest that. Yeah. Um, because if they can open their heart and they can really feel this is really we're not the daisy picking peasants on the bottom of the totem pole anymore. Mm. And I think that's what Seraphim was mentioning. We're just proud. You know, come on in, whatever your problem is, anxiety, depression, blood disorders, skin disorders, bone disorders, postural, you know, malalignments, everything else. Come on in, get on the futon, and we'll see what we can do. Mm -hmm. And in your opinion, it, it is so effective because of what you were speaking to before, working with energy, working with the different sheaths, working with expanding you know consciousness is that is that accurate well again I, I precaution all my students to uh, we call it let a mystery be a mystery but in terms of conversation and things I think ultimately yes it would be the liberation of consciousness the more of everything the more range of motion the more oxygenating of the blood the more removing of metabolic crystallizations the more just liberation from uh, what we've identified now as uh, conditionings. Um, I believe I wrote an essay on, I have about a hundred essays on my website. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them is entitled Primordial Resonance. And I believe that's what all therapists are moving towards when they're dealing with um, an imbalanced condition. And uh, I don't know if this makes any sense to you, but we have uh, a variety of conditionings. As a matter of fact, 98% of the Vedas, which are quite voluminous, mm -hmm. the Vedas make the Bible look like a bead inside of a jar full of beads. <laughs> and uh, those sages who, you know, remained in caves for 50 years, you know, eating crickets and leaves and branches and, and uh, you know, long-term fasting, they come out of this situation and, and all of their knowledge, all their real, realizations were about primarily requesting everyone to become deconditioned uh, from, for example, religious conditioning or environmental or cultural, intellectual, financial, uh, family conditioning. Mm -hmm. um, if we can, you know, shed those conditionings, we can begin to see what we, who we are underneath it all. And so that's, you know, that's a bomb we drop right at the beginning of the class also. And uh, it, seems that it seems to work for people. I mean, even male and female, for example. Um, you know, male this lifetime, female next lifetime, male after that, male, female. You know, spirit is spirit. It's not male or female. And, it, of course, it is both. And it is neither. Mm -hmm. So all kinds of conditions, my goodness sake. And so we feel that we, you know, and you know this also, that Thai body work provides a few moments of real security to an individual so that they can make those changes. And we suggest in class, where else can you find the security? I mean, I feel pretty secure when I'm at the supermarket, but you know. Right. Um, I feel, yeah, there's, a, you know, ladies feel secure at the hair salon and the nail salon. Um, some feel secure at the movie theater. Um, the truth of the matter is we qualify with this a beautiful art of really contributing that valuable spirit to somebody to feel secure. Yeah, somebody taking care of you who's got love and good intention, I don't think it gets any better than that, to tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I love that. That is so well said. Thank you, Chef. <laughs> Thank you. Because, you know, it was just so beautiful what you were just saying right there. I mean, I think you really touched on what this you know, like, I, mean, I even love what you said, like, let a mystery be a mystery, and it's true. It is a mystery. But when you bring love and when you bring this kind of deep reverence to the work, then something great unfolds. And, and I want to compliment you also, so I've seen your work, and, you know, you've got that grace also. And you're, you're channeling that same energy that we're channeling, too. So. Well, thank you. All glories to your efforts, too. I appreciate it. 
I appreciate it. And that's what these talks are all about, I think, is to, you know, we have, we have this essence, this energy, I think, that flows in us. And it's a way to use some modern technology to help it flow in another direction. Modern and classical. Right. <laughs> Coming together. <laughs>